India's nuclear journey. Why did India become a nuclear power after all? Find out here. Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Adi Ajay. As I just mentioned, I'm here to talk about the India's nuclear journey. Why did we actually want to become a nuclear power? What is in store for us after becoming a nuclear power? And how does it help us in the world stage? The story basically is based on India's unsuccessful quest for seeking security from the world during the Cold War, realizing the harsh truth that no one would come to the assistance of India in case it needed it to be. India actually entered the nuclear age one year after its independence in 1948 by establishing the Atomic Energy Commission with Homi Baba as its chairman. This commission was later joined by Raja Ramana and Homi Setna. The trio together are credited with spearheading India's nuclear program and by the year 1963, India had two research reactors and four nuclear power reactors running at full steam providing for its needs. One of the major causes where India started looking for security was the debacle with the Chinese in 1962, after which Beijing carried out its own nuclear tests in 1964. India was left in a lurch and was looking for some assurance from one of the biggest powers in the world, that is the United States, as a security guarantee. India did get some sort of a security guarantee, but not a very implicit one by mentioning clearly that US would come to the aid of India in case of a conflict with China. India began toying with the idea of its own nuclear weapon at that stage. The thought, of course, was there with Indian leaders, but the idea of a nuclear weapon was considered to be much too costly. In the year 1968, India refused to sign the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty on the grounds that it is being discriminatory against the countries who are in the potential of developing nuclear weapons. This was one of the main games that put away India from the United States. India still realized it has to protect itself. If the distance between the, the country and the United States is going to increase, what is the next best option? The next best option at that time was the USSR or the Russians. On the 9th August 1971, India and the Soviet Union signed a treaty of peace, friendship and cooperation. One thing I'd like to mention here is that in spite of the treaty with the Soviet Union, India did realize the belligerence of Pakistan and the aggressive nature of the Chinese. The Chinese have always been like that. They've not just started doing it. Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, as a matter of fact, had declared that we will go nuclear even if the country of Pakistan needs to eat grass. Now, one thing I'd like to mention here, which is very, very important. During the 1960s, in spite of the fact that the Indians were looking at security relationships with various other countries, the scientists in the country were hard at work. They continued to produce and develop the technical capacity to enrich uranium as well as plutonium to have the capability of developing a nuclear weapon. On the 7th of September 1972, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi authorized the scientists to go ahead and develop an indigenously designed nuclear device. That's how we landed up on the test of the year of 1974. These were codenamed the Smiling Buddha because it was conducted on the day of Buddha Purnima that year. One very interesting thing that was done after these big booms that were taking place, these tests were termed as peaceful nuclear tests. The device was an implosion type device. The design was pretty similar to what the Americans had designed, which was known as the Fat Man. Now in 1974, after conducting this one nuclear test, India pretty much gate crashed into the nuclear club, showing the world that it could actually develop its own weapons, pushed into a corner it will do so. The timing of these tests was so special that it rattled pretty much everyone across the world. This test was done right under the nose of the CIA who was operating in Pakistan in those days against the Soviet Union. The political leadership of that time had one thing in mind. If the aggression of China needs to be dealt with, we would try and deal with it on our own. And secondly, if a nuclear weapon is required to get into the big league of the world, so be it. Of course, as I mentioned, the world was pretty much rattled by this development in India. The United States has pulled out all cooperation in, in the field of nuclear science towards India. The Canadians also pulled out. The United States pushed across some amount of sanctions in the country, but India had to bear through it to make its own name in this world. One question begs to mind, which is the fact that the Indians went from the arms of the United States, so-called, 
into the lap of the Russians. Why did this happen? Well, in 1971, during the hopping diplomacy that Henry Kissinger was involved in, he was negotiating with China to open China's doors towards the world market. India, of course, knew that the US-Chinese cooperation, if it starts, would provide for a hindrance against the fact that the US would come to the aid of India against China in terms of a war. At that time, the Indian political leadership had brought this up with Henry Kissinger, who had assured India no amount of dealing with the Chinese would affect United States promises that were given to India. As a lot of the US politicians changed on the last minute, he went back to the United States and literally gave up all his vows towards India. This was the main reason why we signed that peace and cooperation agreement with the Soviet Union. So for 20 years after signing this treaty, India enjoyed the Soviet guarantees that it would come to the aid of India in case of war, which it actually showcased during the 19th 71 war when the US 6th fleet was brought in close to India and the Russians also mobilized their forces against the United States telling them to lay off. In spite of all this, India of course realized that the Chinese and Pakistani friendship was growing harder and faster and the Chinese had made continued efforts to collaborate in the building of their own nuclear program in Pakistan. Between the year 1989 and 1991, India got a shocker, which was the factor that the Soviet Union broke up taking down with itself the Treaty of Friendship and Cooperation which India had signed. One thing to mention here that the years between 1991 and 1998 were perhaps the most dangerous in the history of India, where India did not have its own very strong military power, did not have any treaties with any large nations to protect itself, and of course had both these foes on either side of its border preparing and sharpening up their teeth. The then Prime Minister Narasimha Rao was pretty much aware of this situation. He still wanted to go ahead and take a risk in developing India's nuclear weapon. There were three or four attempts that were made towards this. As a matter of fact, US realized and protested towards the Indian government, preventing the actions of the Indian government towards going nuclear. Now, all these times that the United States interfered with our business taught us one very important lesson, what not to do and how not to do it. So in 1998, when the orders were actually given to start this nuclear program and test the required weapons, India was ready. One big thing, as in the 60s, again in the 90s, Indian scientists continued processing the fuel that would be required to produce these kind of weapons. Indian scientists went ahead with their work and did what was required to be done. Just to tell you a small figure, by the mid-90s, India had enough material to produce about 80 fission bombs without actually having a nuclear program or a tested nuclear weapon. Finally, in the month of May, Again, 1998, the nuclear test conducted by India on the 11th and the 13th of May made it the sixth country in the world outside the so-called nuclear club to actually have these kind of weapons. The nuclear club at that time was the United States, the erstwhile Soviet Union or the Russians, the United Kingdom, France and China. After the big economic reforms of 1991, in 1998, Indian economy was pretty strong and it could have borne all the sanctions that the world would put upon it, leaving apart all the condemnation that came across from the world, including the sanctions and everything else. There were a lot of countries who hammered us publicly although, but passed around congratulatory messages through unofficial channels. Some interesting things to know about this second test of the atomic bomb. There were basically four tests that were done, which were fission bombs and one which was a thermonuclear or a hydrogen bomb which was conducted on the 13th of May. The Indian Army and the Research and Analysis Wing went all steps forward to conceal what was happening in the area of Pokhran where the tests actually took place. Some of the communication that was conducted during those days was in heavy code names. For example, India's hydrogen bomb was tested in a shaft that shaft was known as the White House. The Taj Mahal was the code name of the shaft where the atomic bomb was detonated. The scientists that were involved, including our erstwhile president and of course our very favorite rocket man, APJ Abdul Kalam, donned all military uniforms with ranks and badges. The scientists worked during the night, carried out work till the wee hours of the morning in a flight test range which was close by 
Trishul missiles, Akash missiles, Pinakas, runway buster bombs which were dropped by the Indian Air Force. There was a huge exercise that was planned to counteract all the activities which was happening there and draw attention of the world towards this so-called bombing practice. As I mentioned to you, the research and analysis wing as well as the Indian Army went across far ahead to keep this as a secret. The 58th Engineers Regiment was assigned this task to ensure the successful nuclear detonation of India's atomic weapons. The challenges during this test were far ahead of what we had faced in 1974. Of course, the US was watching us in 1974 as well, but one thing to note, there was no dedicated satellite that the US had to watch over the activities of India. We all talk about the political turbulence in India. I'd like to mention one small thing. From the year 1989 to 1998, India's nuclear program was in progress and was kept as a tightly guarded secret. In spite of the fact, New Delhi, which is the power center in India, saw seven different prime ministers from different political parties take charge of the government. They all had this secret nuclear file on their desk, but not a single word was spoken about this anywhere in the country. One of the major reasons, in my opinion, that the Indians went nuclear was to rebuke this nuclear apartheid that was on in the world. There were five, or five countries that wanted to hold the nuclear bomb and they were trying hard to prevent anybody else from developing and using a nuclear weapon. Finally, what is India's nuclear doctrine? Nuclear doctrine stands for the fact how a country plans to use its nuclear arsenal. India says only one simple thing, no first use. Thank you for watching my video. Share my videos with your friends. And of course, yes, subscribe to my channel. I say this in every one of my videos. Share a thought for the soldiers standing in the battle lines today against both our big fat enemies. Once a day, every day. Jai Hind!